Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kwon Ho and when I was a young warthog I would sit in elementary school and I would think to myself, oh man, class is so terrible. But then my teacher would roll in this television on a set of wheels and I knew, oh my goodness, I knew, this was going to be amazing. We're going to watch Bill and I the Science Guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill and I the Science Guy. We knew that when Bill was on stage that everything was going to be great because the fastest 30 minutes of our lives was about to pass. We're going to learn some real science. It would engage us directly at the core, and more importantly, we would learn something. But a lot of that changed the instant we went into high school. See, whereas elementary made science really fun, high school started making science really hard. Everything was standardized, had to do a certain amount of tests, specific lab procedures, had to study biology, chemistry, some physics. And what we found was there was this image, right? These twins, same animal, different perspective. We saw science as both good and bad, happy and sad. And unfortunately, this was the best dichotomy I could find. <laughs> so what we, what we found as we continued through high school in our adventure was that science, the only difference between screwing around and science was writing down your results, and that's Mythbusters, right? We found that through shows like Mythbusters, Brainiac, and Iron Chef America, you can try a bunch of crazy things and learn just for science. And for science, a 17-year-old was able to create a biofuel lab in her bedroom. For science, a 15-year-old developed the first diagnostic for pancreatic cancer. For science, scientists all around the country say, let's just make everything go up. They've taken bacteria, made it green. They took cats, made it green. Monkeys, also green. Joe and I, still not green. <laughs> Hopefully it stays that way. But the reason that things like this can happen is because we're moving tech from a technology of just electronics and mechanics into a technology of biology. Even Bill Gates agrees that if he was 13 again, he wouldn't be hacking electronic parts, he'd be hacking biology. And that's why we're here. We're here to tell you about a new technology called synthetic biology. If you remember genetic engineering, it's similar to going on Microsoft Word and cutting and pasting different paragraphs. Synthetic biology is like having complete control of the word processor. We are literally rewriting the genetic code. If you'd like, you can make a square watermelon. If you'd like, you can make super salmon. It tastes pretty good. If you'd like, you can engineer malaria, malaria treating monkeys to treat uh, mosquitoes. Now, biology is moving from the high-tech labs of universities into the garages of people like you and me. And we can see this by the 17-year-old and the 15-year-old that are doing their work. And what does this take us to? The board of college stage. I'm generally bored, Joe's pretty bored, we get bored of each other, but that also means we have a lot of free time on our hands, and that free time can help us invent new things. One of the things we are looking into is competitive research, which brings us to the International Genetically Engineering Machine Competition. I discovered this competition a couple years ago and helped start the first team at Arizona State University. Since then, we've done a lot of research in the lab from things like developing synthetic bricks to be used on Mars, to developing new methods for healthcare delivery in developing countries. And we can take the research that's normally reserved for people like primary researchers and postdocs and put that into the hands of undergrads. And we decided to take that a step further. Joe and I, along with a few other students, are working on a startup using biotechnology in order to help people in developing countries test their water sources for preventable diseases. So one of the magical parts of the cost lowering in the biotech industry is that now you have your own DIY do-it-yourself spaces. So there's BioCurious, which is located in New York, and GenSpace, which is located in Sunnyvale, California. And these are companies where you could literally walk in and that day just start doing your own research. And other companies exist for synthetic bio as well, from nonprofit to for-profit. Uh, the examples on the far left here are nonprofit, which is the BioBricks Foundation, which will standardize parts, and then all the way to Amaris, which will create pharmaceutical drugs to treat malaria. And there's a whole variety of applications you can do with synthetic bio. When you re-engineer bacteria, you can create more effective disease, uh, vaccines at a lower cost. Better medication, superfood, and even gasoline, just like the 17-year-old girl created her own biofuel alarm underneath. So what you as an individual can do to get plugged in with SynBio is educate yourself on biotechnology, learn more about the industry, get involved yourself, do some research, encourage others around you to be more aware of the science so that you can talk to people about it, learn more, and of course hug your local scientists because we love you, that's why we're trying to help you out, and we love the science. 
And of course, always have fun, because science is a, is a field that requires you to be curious, just like you were when you were in elementary school. So remember that one time when you're really passionate about what you love. Thank you.